All right. I hope you're ready for our Real Houses of Salt Lake City recap. Monica's mom does not have it going on. She had released a new video today and she, or not today, but this week or over the weekend, she released a new video clapping back at Monica for the stories that she told little girl. And then we're going to get into Mary and Whitney and their beef. So I hope you're ready for it. Let's dive in. Oh, hi, it's me, Zach Peter, pop culture junkie, reality TV insider, published author, and host of the No Filter with Zach Peter podcast. Here I'll bring you all the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, and unfiltered combos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest tea. Now, let's dive in. What up? I got Josh from Louisiana here. What's up, y'all? Are you ready to recap Salt Lake City? I am. This was actually a really, really good episode. What would you rank it? One to ten? Uh, nine. Really? You, you got to give a good. little room for improvement, but I, I think that this was a truly, truly incredible episode. So we start off with, well, we kind of have some boring scenes. We have... What's her name? Angie Kay and her scene with her dad, which thank God he knows I, how to. No, I'm sorry. I didn't think that was a boring scene. I thought that was a very lovely scene between Angie Kay and her dad. And I, I mean, made it was a note of that. It was, okay. That, oh, that do you was, have your notes? Can I, you please pull I, up your notes? I, yes, my notes are pulled you up. Know, why don't, but, why don't, why don't, you know what? Since you never go live on your, I love Josh's pumpkin, Trump pumpkin. Yep. Thank you, it's Patreon. Not a, it's not a Trump pumpkin. It's the state of Louisiana. And your I brows are that. fabulous, Josh. Wow. What about thank mine? You. Um, do you want to? You're gonna run the show tonight because you have all your notes. Since you never go live on your channel, you can just run oh tonight's God, live. No, D listen, you just dived in saying the boring scenes with Botox Angie K and it was boring. It was that was not boring, Zach. Sometimes you need to have like those like true wholesome moments with these ladies to see like other sides of their lives, and I thought that was a really it, listen. Even though I don't really agree with angie k and everything that she's doing right now with the whole meredith of it all i still loved seeing her with her dad and i thought that was a very special moment and it kind of warmed my heart maybe you could use a little bit of heartwarming <laughs> the audacity the audacity um Yes, it was. A, listen, it was a wholesome moment. It was nice. It was fine. It was cute. I guess I'm not emotionally invested in Angie. Look at that. Cindy said, Z, 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 Z. Jen said, yawn. It just, we're not no. invested in Angie enough for us to this care. This is how you're getting invested in her. Do you, you, you don't want her to show her life? I mean, come not on. Not after what she gave us originally. Oh, come on. All right. Fine. Um, no, I, I thought it was, I thought it was great. Um, I don't like that comment. Um, what comment? That one. Oh, the wholesome moments. It was a wholesome moment. Do you know? Her dad do knows you, how to chop a, he, her dad knows how to handle a cucumber. Did you see how that was spelled? I did. And her dad knows how to work a cucumber. Unlike oh Kendall Jenner. No, 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 no. We're not going there. We're not going there. Sorry. You opened that door. No. You not, opened did not you, mean to open that door, but you opened again that I gotta back door. With the audience, you opened here, that so. hole. God in heaven, please give me strength. Mm. I, look at they agree. Agree with Zach. Z z z z z z z z. It just it wasn't that compelling to me. Um, I get it. It, it just was to me. It I, was okay. I, Josh, that's, that's where I stand. Josh is a sucker for the pandering to the audience. Um, we also had the the Whitney and Justin scene where they're talking about their marriage and and they're talking about. Um, um, I didn't pay too much attention. I like listen. I get it. That scene, I would like say, a little bit of a struggle right now. But I think it was more so um, when Justin said about Whitney going to this. Um, lunch or dinner with mary he was like don't have expectations and i think he was pretty 
on point about that. I think Justin wants a snowflake. <laughs> Come on. If anybody's going to get a snowflake, it's going to be John. Really? Oh, he had a John great, Barlow? He had a great confessional. He had a great confessional. He No, he's, he's great on the show. I'm saying yeah. the one that wants it the most is Justin. I I, I don't I don't think that's accurate, but okay. Go ahead. I just Proceed. think I feel like Justin and Whitney since I like Whitney. And listen, she knows how to stir the pot and she knows how to squeeze the juice out of people. But I just feel like their couple scenes just feel a little forced to me. You think? Yeah, they just feel like we're trying. I just feel like they're both acting on camera and like pretend like I don't know. You want to talk about acting on camera that and this will be a little later. But Monica's mother. Oh, yeah. That is acting on camera. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I ugh, I I can't get behind that woman. So well, two things I want to talk about before we get into that woman because there's a lot of that woman that we're gonna be talking about. Um, Jack and his mission call. Oh, where? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Are you adjusting the lighting in real time? Oh boy, is that bad? Zach had me adjust the lighting earlier because no my spray tan looked a little too dark. And so I just wanted to adjust it. Yeah, I didn't want him to get canceled like Ramona. Oh my god! Okay. No, but to what, be go go ahead. Sorry. Well, now I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, We're talking about Justin and uh, oh no no, no. And... Jack. Yeah, Jack had his. No. Uh, you know I don't like talking. No about no no, no but kids. let me let me say what I'm going to say because I okay. don't think you'll be upset with what I have to say. I just wanted to say this was a sweet family moment. This was a moment that I found was very endearing. Um, Even though Lisa Barlow has this kind of self-absorbed shell that she operates from, I thought it was kind of, it it humanized her in a way, even though she kept like trying to make it about herself. I like that we got to see John Barlow. I like that we got to see him kind of be yeah. mentory towards his son and share his experience with going on a mission. I liked seeing how excited Jack was to go on his mission. I like that we got to have this nice family moment without it being like a Heather Gay trying to insert herself and like cause drama using Jack. Okay. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that. I think that see, I'm capable him... of saying nice things occasionally. Um, but yeah, I, I agree that, um, that was a truly wholesome family moment. Wholesome with the W. Thank you, Zach. Not to take away from, uh, Angie K's moment with her dad, because I still think that that was a wholesome moment, but, uh, but yeah, it was, I, I think that like John's, I have it in my notes. Hmm. Pages brought it back. Actually, I tried to keep them, <laughs> but no. Seeing oh, we reduced it to twelve pages. All right, but seeing how proud John is of Jack was just that. That really like it just kind of gave you that like familial moment that I think you know maybe sometimes is lacking. You know, I agree. And I think, you know, I I was I enjoyed these scenes because I think, you know, we really got to see because I feel like Heather made it so much about like she doesn't like that Jack is going on a mission because the Mormon, you know, church is terrible. Right. And I just feel like this got this showed us a piece of the Mormon church in like a positive light with people that have a good experience. In right. It. Yeah. I don't know much about Mormonism, yeah. but I appreciated getting to get a little bit of that insight. With well, them. yeah, I completely agree with that. And I think that, you know, you do need to kind of ha- see the positive and negatives of both, you know, any situation, but, um, but yeah, seeing this in more of like a positive light, even though, I know Lisa was very resistant to this entire thing to begin with. Um, it was special. Yeah. And I I, I enjoyed it. Um, then we have Meredith versus Whitney at Heather's tailgate. 
and Whitney calls oh Meredith out that about sucked. her near death experience. Oh, it, all, right, all right, okay, that sucked because it was like that entire scene was like really good and it was like felt like a really good girl's moment. And then for Whitney to bring up, you know, the whole Meredith, you know, crashing your car and everything. And listen, I'm sorry, but if you've ever even been in a fender bender, you know that jolt of energy that goes through yeah. you that scares the shit out of you. Yeah. And again, we saw one frame of what Meredith like actually experienced. Okay, but Whitney verified that it was not that bad because she drove right past Meredith on the side of the road with a broken uh, leg in the snow. Okay, you're being a little ugly right now, but <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I disagree. You don't know, like, you know, if, like, yeah, they uh, drove into a snowbank or whatever, but, like, what were the rest here's, of the surroundings? I'm here's sorry. Here's the thing. I think, yes, it's true, and it's possible that she was afraid for her life, right? Yeah. But then at some point, you realize the damage was not that bad. The, you know, like, it wasn't as bad as I thought that it was in the moment. And when you realize it was not as bad as you thought that it was in the moment, then you're like, okay, let me retract that and be like, I'm fine. I'm alive. Like, it wasn't that bad. Disagree. I disagree. I'm sorry. I disagree. I think why? That, why do you disagree? Well, because listen, little girl, listen, little girl. Um, again, we do not know what the entire like circumstance was. We do not know what the entire surroundings were. And I'm sorry if you go back and look at that picture or the uh, the video of that car in the snowbank in the bunny. That slope. looks like it goes down into. No, it does not. Yes, it does. No, it yes, does it not. Does. It I looks like those are you. bunny I slopes, dis- Joshua. I disagree with you. Completely disagree. Uh, well, I'm sure like some people will, but that looks scary to me. So I like Meredith. I do like Meredith. She's probably one of my favorites on the cast. I sh- I certainly don't like Heather Gay, but like, come on. I don't think I think there is, even though Whitney does kind of annoy me sometimes i think that there's a little bit of truth in what whitney was saying that i think meredith was trying to use that as a convenient out this is i'm exhausted by this already i don't think that we this is not like the meat of the episode this is such a boring top to to discuss (laughs) okay then let's discuss whitney and mary because whitney invites mary bobblehead to come and have a conversation to hash things out and mary's like you called me and my husband my grandpa a predator okay um that lunch was it a lunch or a dinner i think it was a dinner because they had wine anyways lunch or dinner whatever it was it went nowhere but it went everywhere <laughs> Bobblehead was living for it. Mary was not having any, yeah, freaking second of Mary's that like, entire thing. Yeah, Mary's like, I came for the food and I came for you to apologize and to kiss the ring. And Whitney's like, I'm sorry, but you have to own the text messages that you sent to me in 2009. Yeah, I was like, oh my god. Oh my, oh my God. I was like, oh my God, Mary's being so dramatic. Or like, what did she expect from Whitney? Like, does she really think Whitney was just going to bend over and be like, yeah, Mary, you're great. Yeah. Sorry. I, think, I absolutely think that's what Mary was expecting to happen. If she wanted uh, a path forward, she wanted Whitney to just like kind of fall in line. I think but... that's kind of what you have to do with Mary. You either fall in line and let Mary be Mary and know that she's just going to be fully ruthless and toothless, or you just, you're not going to have a relationship with Mary. Like Mary already doesn't like Whitney. Like what made Whitney think that she was going to be able to have like a logical conversation? Listen, yeah. Mary literally married her grandpa okay. to get the church that her grandma left when she died. And she was like, I want that church. I need those parishioners to pay for my Louis Vuitton. And so guess what? Grandpa, let's go in the closet. Oh, my God. You are ruthless and toothless tonight. I mean, 
Call a spade a spade. I don't think we're supposed to say that. We're not supposed to say that anymore? Pretty sure not. Isn't it about cards, like poker? I don't think so. What is a spade? I thought spades is in, like, the cards. Uh, We'll look at this offline, but um, anyways. um, No, the the whole uh, Mary and Whitney thing, fucking phenomenal. That was great TV. Crack me the fuck up. Yeah. She was not giving Whitney any attention. And Whitney's like, can you not meet me halfway? And I'm like, who do you think Mary is? Mary doesn't want to be here in general. Nope. You think Mary's going to give you the time of day? Bob Mary Ed. is there for the free food. And she made sure she got her free she food. Took her- oh, yeah. As soon as they to go? as soon as they brought the food, she was like, <laughs> okay, are we done here? Yeah. Production, can you call me an Uber? Yeah. I'm done. That's exactly what happened. And I fucking lived for The it. only thing I was upset about Mary with was the fact that she didn't finish her wine. How do you leave a full glass of wine on the table without finishing it? I would uh, never. I am sure she did not leave that. But also, okay, and this is another thing. Do you remember when um, the uh, server came around and mm. Mary... F- Freaked spilled, out because yeah. someone because she spilled something on her. I didn't even see anything being spilled, but her face, she was so appalled that they spilled. She's like, "You did not just spill food on my plate." At first, I was like, "Wait, did she spill like food?" Well, she said she spilled it on her, and maybe there was like a splash that got on her. I would be pissed about that too. I'm not gonna lie. If some if a waiter spilled food on I get it, it's an accident, but that doesn't mean I'm not still upset that you spilled food on me. I don't know, but her face was priceless. It was as though you had just like wait, Brittany says are Wednesday night lives a usual thing? This was not on my calendar. Brittany, where have you been, girl? We've been recapping We've been Salt Lake City since the beginning. Every yeah, every Wednesday night, we're here recapping Salt Lake City. Yeah, baby. I don't know where you've been, Brittany. It's Brittany, bitch. Brittany said, I've been tired. Oh, same. I feel awesome. that. I feel that. <sighs> but that right. was a great scene between Mary and Whitney. Now, should we get into the Monica of it all? Oh, my God. This has been what I have been looking forward to all day. Oof. So we get Monica opening up at Heather's tailgate earlier, right? Mm-hmm. We see that, the, you know, she's kind of talking about her relationship with her mom. And we find out that her mom um, is the one who's on the lease for her car. But even though Monica's the one that's paying the payments for the car, it's in the mom's name. So she, the mom takes the car whenever she wants. And she threatens after Angie Kay's bunny Easter lunch, brunch, whatever that was. She thought that. She she was not happy with Monica, so she took the car back and said, you know, if you don't give me the car back, I'm yeah. going to call the cops on you and tell them that the car was stolen. And just really sounds awful. But I'm going to be honest. In listening to Monica tell this story, I was kind of like, mm, is your mom really that bad? Like, everybody's going to think that their mom is terrible and they're going to paint their mom in this really bad light, right? But then we get, well, some people have, some people have great relationships with their moms. Yeah, Some people have troubled relationships and some people have no relationships. I was like, maybe they don't agree. Like, maybe there's a sliver of truth where Monica's mom was really just trying to look out for her at Angie Kay's bunny, whatever. Then we get to the dinner scene with Monica and her mom. And I was like, oh, hell no. I was like, all all grace that I was holding, all the potential grace that I was holding for Monica's mom when out the window when I was like, oh, oh, she is something else. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I lost all of my grace and composure for her the last episode. And this just solidified it. She is a narcissist asshole. She Sorry. she really is like she opened the conversation by saying, I'm not going to talk to you like some weak ass bitch. Oh, and then she called Monica a motherfucker. 
Yep. She goes on to say that she doesn't. So Monica brings up the story about her making out with some dude and leaving Monica in the back seat while she goes off to make out with some dude. And she's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck about making out with the dude and leaving Monica in the back seat. And then she says she calls her she calls her disrespectful before calling her a motherfucker. And then Monica was like, did you just call me a fucker? And she's like, no, I said motherfucker. Yeah, that was I, my jaw was on the floor because, listen, I, I may disagree with my mama at some times, but at the same time, I respect her because my mama respects me, you know, and I do not feel that Monica's mother respects her. Mm-mm. And it is, it's it's heartbreaking to see because, and and especially after learning all this like backstory with her and like being dropped off at these people's house at 12 years old while her mother goes and does her thing. And her mother's like, I didn't realize how expensive it was in New York. And that's like, part of what? being a fucking parent. I'm sorry. Yeah. You yeah. make, you figure it out. You make it so, work. You even make if, it work. You even make it work, you... but not by like just going a abandoning yeah even if you can't live because she was like well it wasn't the best school district here's the thing you make it work yeah you know you you put your kid in a bad school district but like you don't just leave your kid like to me that was so no strange like seriously like my heart went out to monica well here's here's one thing i will say because i was Sort of, for the most part, raised by my grandparents. Um, and not in, like, a bad way, but, like, my parents were, they had me in high school. that Like, and I have no, I, I don't fault them for anything, but they just, they didn't know how to become parents, so they allowed their own parents to kind of take the lead. And I have no resentment towards them about that, but I know there were certainly moments where they were like, my parents are better equipped to handle certain things that I'm not equipped to handle. And so they allowed my grandparents to kind of take the lead in certain things. Whereas I understand that because at least you're a kid and those are your parents and you trust your parents. This was a family that like was not their family. And Monica was very clear. She's like, yes, I knew them. Yes. Like we like, like I knew who the family was, but it was strange that my mom left me to be raised by this other family. Yeah. Yeah. And Oh God, it wasn't only that it was just, like when Monica talked about like kind of this generational trauma that they had with her, um, her grandmother, like inflicting this stuff on her mom. And then, but her mom was like, I don't have trauma. She's like, what's my trauma? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. She, and she, uh, she told Monica, she was like, you have trauma. And then Monica was like, yeah, but you have trauma too. And she was like, I don't have trauma. Like thinking that she's holier than thou and that she's, you know, above it all. And that is when I was like, this woman is a narcissist. She cannot acknowledge the fact that she has any faults. Even the fact that she had no shame in being like, yeah, I made out with some dude and left you in the backseat. Like, what's the big deal? Like, yeah. And Monica was like, but that like affected me. And she couldn't just have empathy for her daughter in that moment. She couldn't be like, let me try to understand how this affected you so that maybe we can work on things. No, her only solution was we need therapy, which is already in my head code for being like, we need to have a therapy scene for the show on camera. Like Uh she's already talking through how she wants to stay on the show because mama wants the show so badly. And it was just at first I was like, I think Monica might be a bit of a drama queen and she's playing up these issues with her mother. But then when we actually see their interaction, I was like, oh, no, I was like, no, 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 no. 100 percent. Her mom. I don't, what is her mom's name? I don't know. Monica's mom. Monica's mom wants a snowflake. That's what she's gunning for. And sorry, girl. I don't think you're in the running. No. I mean, listen, it makes for good television, but like, it was just, it was so hard to watch. And I was like, can somebody get her a fucking aspirin, please? Somebody just get her an aspirin. And like fucking going in, like, 
they sit down and she immediately starts crying. That I, the hard part of that for me was just seeing Monica be so like stoic, not just stoic, but like not affected by it. Like yeah. you can just tell I've been through this so many times. I've done this yeah. so many times. She's performing for the cameras because this is what she does. And she was just like, like when she called, when the waiter comes over and she's like, can I have a straw? While her mom's yeah, crying, yeah. you can just tell she's like, this is not like. Right, right. Absolutely. And what exactly was uh, Monica's mom's job in New York? Was it like an actress position? Because it seems like she's got Brittany, a little bit of Brittany history. said Monica's mom. Seriously, what is her name? Nobody knows. No one knows. Nobody no one knows. knows. Listen, let's hope she was an actress with that stage, stage crying. Stage crying. Yes. Thank you. I mean, it was total. It was totally staged. Oh, I didn't catch this. Somebody, they're saying that uh, Monica said she was left in the trunk, not the back seat. I thought it was the back seat. What? No, I don't. I don't think that. she put her in the trunk. I don't remember that. I think you Come guys on. are misremembering that. Y'all are misremembering that. She did not leave her in the trunk. Come on. That would be wild. I don't think it was the trunk. I think it was. The, I remember wow. her saying back seat. Listen. If she said trunk, that I would have immediately been like, oh, my God. She didn't leave her in the trunk. Brittany says her mom being named Linda is an insult to the mom on Bob's Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, oh my just, God, Bob. I couldn't believe, like, I was so shocked by her telling Monica, one, not feeling badly about the, the leaving her in the backseat. Yep. But also telling her, like, yeah, I'm going to talk to you like this. I'm not going to talk to you like I'm some weak-ass bitch. And then her calling Monica a motherfucker. And Monica being like, did you call me a fucker? She's like, no, I called you a motherfucker. That, that like, was I like, was... yeah. That was like one of what? the most unfathomable things for me to watch. Because I could not imagine my mama talking to me. Everybody's like that. saying that she said trunk. I I remember her saying backseat, but okay, we, trunk. Roll the tape. We need to roll the tape back because <laughs> no, I remember no her way. saying backseat. Trunk would make it so much worse. I mean, that would make it fucking terrible. And she didn't regret it. Reg even if it was the trunk or the backseat, obviously trunk is worse. But like. Maybe she meant trunk as in like you have a truck. You know how the trucks have like what is that the bed in the back? The tail bed. Tail bed. Okay. Yeah. Maybe she meant like you have to sit in the tail bed while I make whoopee in the front. No, I got to watch this back because I never heard trunk. No, you don't put your daughter in the trunk. You put your junk in the trunk. Or you put Zach in the trunk. Ayo. <laughs> Shut up. <sighs> yeah, the motherfucker moment was tough. It was just the whole thing was just not like I I felt for Monica, but I could also just see how like disassociated she was in that yeah. moment. Wait, I actually want to see this real quick. Oh, what's the My mom ran over one of our bikes because we wouldn't move it once to make a point which I now think is hilarious, but the emotional abuse Monica likely went through is not even funny. Yes, I agree with that, but I got to say, so one time me and my best friend had gone out and he drove and he brought me back home to my sister's house and he was, what? And he was backing out of the driveway and he ran over my niece's bike and he goes, oh, my God, I feel so bad. He was like, nah, screw it. It shouldn't have been in the driveway. <laughs> True. So there you go. Facts. Facts are facts. Facts are facts. Okay. Any other thoughts about Salt Lake? Or Okay. So Monica's, video, Monica's mom posted a video and she's like, listen, everybody, I just want to set the record straight. I saw the story that Monica tells Heather Gay. And you know what? Heather Gay got a black eye and she deserved it. No, she didn't really say that. But she was talking about how Monica was basically lying. I did not see this video. 
You didn't see the video? No. I oh my god. Let me show the show you the video right now. I'm going to show you the video because you're going to be like WTF because I was watching it earlier. Okay. So it's Monica's mom. Monica's mom has got it going on. Okay. He already has it pulled up. The story that Monica tells Heather in the new promo that dropped today is false. Monica knew the family. She was close to the family. They were our downstairs neighbors in Arizona. We lived in a condo building. They lived downstairs. We lived upstairs. Monica babysat with the boys. Monica spent time with the family. If I worked late, she would have dinner with this family. We were in the same word building. We were friends. We were neighbors. She loved this family. She loved the mom. She loved the boys and they loved her. I took a job in New York City. This was before Monica started school. So the plan was that Monica would stay with them in Pennsylvania while I went ahead to start my new job and look for an apartment in New York City. I could not find an apartment in my budget in a neighborhood that felt safe with a school district that felt safe for Monica. It was decided that it was safer for Monica to stay in Pennsylvania with this family. I visited on weekends. I called every night before she went to bed. She was there for one semester and then we moved back to Arizona. I don't know why Monica is telling these stories. One could say that's how she remembers it. Okay. Maybe she doesn't remember me visiting her on weekends. Maybe she doesn't remember me calling every night before bed. But there is no way, no way that she doesn't remember how much she loved this family and how close she was to them. And also just look at her outfit in this thing. She has her hat on. She's got her scarf on. Oh my God. Why is that the angle that you're taking right now? Okay. What is your reaction to the video now that you've watched it for the first time? <sighs> I thought you saw that. No, I did not. Um, I still makes think it a I little still, more complicated, but I still don't think it's right for her to leave Monica with. Obviously, listen, obviously it severely affected Monica and she is justified in her feelings. Well, 100%. Hold on. I want to say this. We know Monica's mom is performative and will exact or bend the truth to fit her narrative. That yeah, said, that's, that's fair. That said, Monica is her mother's daughter. And whether there was an intentional, you know, embedding of a script in her or not, because sometimes I think, you know, we... No, 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 no. I think that Monica's reactions to everything that happens with her mother are authentic. I feel like her mother's reactions to everything is inauthentic. And that I, I stand by that. Okay. 100%. I was just trying to play devil's advocate and say... Uh, yeah, sometimes sure. we unintentionally take on traits from our parents and maybe there's a little bit of this happening from both of them where they're both exaggerate. There's I think, a, yeah, there's always like a little bit, you know, there's, um, what is the saying? There's your side, your side and the truth or yeah. something like that. Your uh, side, their side and the truth, your side, their side and the truth. And I, I feel like it's somewhere in the middle, but Monica is, there is deep rooted trauma there and yeah. I empathize with her. And no, I agree. I, I, and I definitely yeah. think that her mother is playing up for the cameras a lot. I agree. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying there may be an element of it where maybe there's a little bit of like, exaggeration on Monica's part too, just because she is the product of her mother and she doesn't know any better. There could be, I mean, but at the same yeah, time, there, there certainly could be, but, but at the same time, I think Monica was what, 11, 12 years old that like, that's, you need your mom at that point. Like that's not when your yeah. mom goes yeah, off. That's and... like, that's like the, 
like and she wasn't left she mind. wasn't left with family she wasn't left yeah. with people that she grew up with like she was left yeah. with strangers you know yeah i agree with that yeah well i mean she said that they weren't she said that they weren't strangers but even if they weren't strangers they still weren't and also as a parent like how do you just leave your daughter with the neighbors i i would like to know what her dream because monica refers to it as her dream job but the mom definitely seems to kind of take it as like it was the only job like it was the job i could get at the time to provide for us yeah oh god not a fan of her mother any other thoughts before we we wrap this live and get some our shortest live um yeah i'm starving i'm starving Uh, no no other thoughts from me really um let me check my notes real quick yeah Just please make sure that i haven't missed anything. sorry guys this might take a minute for him to check his notes shut up zach <sighs> quite God. quite a few notes to review um no covered that wait hold on okay when <laughs> so did uh lisa lisa said she went on a um mission right no lisa did not john did what did lisa go on that she had this like whole single white female oh, situation college. she went to college her college her college roommate that said that she just wanted to try on her clothes to see what it felt like to be her no i want to find out <laughs> where is this girl right now that was weird also like the fact that like she led with that story she's like there's a point to this story my point being if you ever want to come home (laughs) you can come home listen she's she's providing her son a cautionary tale which i respect but what the fuck lisa walked in on her roommate dressed in her clothes not okay no that was weird that was weird. Wait, Deborah says you came in late and now you're cutting us off early. What's up with that? Okay, first of all, Deborah, we started a few minutes late. Yes. However, we normally give you a good 45 minute live. So when we say we're leaving early, we're at 37 minutes. We've given you a full near 40 recap. I mean, you know. Don't be ugly to Deborah. She's just she's just asking. Deborah's being a little salty. Hey Josh, what size? t-shirt g where i'm bringing you presents <gasps> Brittany. oh Brittany's coming to the oh duh it's britney britney's coming to the bourbon it's britney bitch uh i'm a medium and i Are know you that them? you're expect i was just asking what the fuck is that supposed to mean well last time when you i you took the medium hoodie you were like it was okay. too tight his medium hoodie was like a child size medium hoodie Okay, he's a medium. I'm a medium, and I've got your shirt from Louisiana coming. Trust me. For Brittany? Yeah, she asked for a Louisiana shirt. Oh, and you got it. Yeah. Money Grace said Josh's first interview on his channel. Lisa's old college roommate. Well, he has to. Yes. He has to go. He has to actually. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow, you fucking bitch. No, that it wasn't that hard. You have to go live on your fucking channel first. Okay. <laughs> that said, thank you guys for joining us on a, well actually, Deborah. Don't be mean to Deborah. I'm not gonna be well, it went by too quick. Don't yeah. I'm not yelling at you, Deborah. But to be yeah, fair, don't yell at Deborah. This is the second live that we've given you this week. Because yesterday we gave you a full hour and a half of us carving pumpkins on Halloween. Was that an hour and a half? It was over an hour. It was maybe like an hour and fourteen. Oh my god! I, well, well, it took time. Too to, long. It but took time to carve like, pumpkins. Carving pumpkins like it takes your attention away. For, okay, don't, don't, Jesus don't, Christ. dude. Why did I? Ch- Ashwa. <sighs> oh my god! Carving goodness. pumpkins like takes your attention away from like questions and everything like that so i would say that was like a 45 minute i do understand everybody's fear in that live last night because we had the ridge knives and we were just like i know for me i was like it's not cut 
time. It's not <laughs> cutting through because I was like afraid I, like we could have literally died. We could have. I, I'm s actually surprised that I did not slice my hand open. I'm surprised we did not harm ourselves in the process of that. Good night, you all. It was was fun. And Josh I didn't is have Trump a Trump pumpkin. My God, everyone, go look at the state of Louisiana and then compare it jo to my yes. fucking thing. Oh, my, my fucking Zelda said she bought an electric pumpkin cutter. That's smart. I'm sure Zach will have that next year. Yeah, but okay. So Josh, so I cut a martini. Wait, do you want to show them the pumpkin? He cut a fucking straight line, a straight line. Can you show line. them, Josh, the candle made it work? Oh, man. Can you just show them the pictures? No, just show them the pumpkins. Okay, this was my martini. I put a candle in it earlier and then it started to burn the pumpkin. So I stopped. I took, I had to take the candle out, but that was my martini. Can you not lick the butthole? I wasn't. Oh my God. I have to keep him in check guys. Sorry. <laughs> Muddy Green said Josh made a foot. It looks like a foot. It is the state of Louisiana. You assholes. Look at she said it looks like Muddy Grace said Josh made a foot. Look at there are the toes. It looks <laughs> can y'all see that in my state of Louisiana? Red Sox there said that's not that bad at all. Oh, that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Brittany said, What is that? <laughs> Brittany, you're not it's apparently the state of Louisiana. You know what, Brittany? I'm going to get you a fucking shirt from Nevada. Jen said Josh made a foot slash toilet slash shirt. Jen, I hope I see you at Friendsgiving. The Bourbon Room. At November Bourbon 9th. Room. The link is in the description below, November guys. Get your 19th. tickets. I'm ready to go ahead. And oh, go my God. Oh, my God. God. Y'all are pissing me off about my fucking pumpkin. I... Is there any way that we can preserve our pumpkins <laughs> for the bourbon room? <laughs> for the bourbon room, <laughs> that'll be what we do on stage. We're just gonna carve pumpkins. We're just gonna what? Carve pumpkins. Did you say we're gonna? Josh, <laughs> you said that, Zach. Can you not keep doing pussy fingers? You. Oh my God! Did everyone else just see that Zach just did that? Pussy no, fingers. Am I the only one that saw that? Zach, when you put the lighter in yours, I couldn't stop laughing. Why? What did I do? I don't remember. You put a fucking lighter in yours. That's, that's, oh. that's what you did. Do you oh, I put that? the lighter up the butthole. Yeah. I lit a flame up that hole. Your pumpkin has no pumpkin left. She's shading <laughs> that's me. Your, that's your, She's <laughs> shading me. <laughs> Brittany, you and I are going to have words baby <laughs> i can't <laughs> wait okay well i hope deborah's happy because we stretched this live out to 43 minutes all right i know we we got to get some supper yeah we need some supper i'm hungry oh wait what there's a frankenstein oh it looks like frankenstein's foot eat my ass josh i agree with you the scene with angie's dad was warming thank you I love that she's oh heartwarming. I love that she's showing her culture. I'm not an Angie fan, but I appreciate her bond with her dad. Thank you, thank you. That exactly. It was. I'm not necessarily an Angie fan, so to speak, but that was a really good scene with them, and I I thought that was special. So, Brittany says, Josh, I love you. Don't worry, I'm five one. I can't win. Listen, <laughs> first of all, Brittany, I I'll just need to tell you. I'll pick you up and I'll cuddle you. I like just need to baby. tell you, Brittany, Josh is not as tall as you think he is. Okay. He's literally sitting on a fucking pillow so that he looks taller. He's full of shit. Get this, pull this fucking pillow out from. Okay. I can't do that. There's, there's no pillow. But I will. He's trying to pull a chair from out from under me. I will post an Instagram 
Actually, <laughs> you know what I can do? <laughs> Look at this. Josh Rock. What? Look at it. It's crazy. What is what are what are you doing? Look at this. And then I'm gonna show the receipts so that everyone can see he's sitting on a pillow. I'm sitting on that's, like a rag. A pillow that's folded over. It's a long pillow and he folded it over so he's double the height. It's all right. Don't worry about it. It's double the height. He think he's fooling you. Don't let him fool you. Okay? okay. It's it's okay, Zachy. It's okay. A little shorty. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. Go subscribe to Josh's YouTube channel. I don't know why you would because he never posts. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel. I love you all. <laughs> Good content's coming. Wow. Wow, Bethany. Wow. And you just rubbed your hand on my shirt. The audacity. The audacity. All right, guys. I hope Deborah's real happy because we stretched this out to 46 minutes, Deborah. 46 46 minutes love you deborah there we go all right guys thank you enjoy your night we will be back next wednesday as we are every wednesday recap in salt lake city for you ciao for bye. now bye